The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Wrestling to the Max, Monday Night Raw, review. Hello and welcome to Rest of the Max Raw Review for October 10th, 2016. And unfortunately, due to some things that have happened, uh, we've had to switch the order of how we do podcasts now on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, this doesn't affect the SmackDown Review, so don't worry about that. But uh, we've had to do the football podcast before we do uh, any of the uh, wrestling podcasts now. So... And I, I don't know when that's going to change back. Uh, it all depends on a certain person uh, getting back to what they normally do. Um, so uh, Paul fell asleep waiting on me to finish the Fantasy Football Podcast. Uh, so it'll just be me and uh, Gary and, of course, uh, I, a guest here that always helps out, Brandon Bisco being. Uh, Gary's on a cruise this week, as we've told you from last week, so he will be back starting on the following Raw uh, after this one. Um, so, uh, Brandon, thank you for, for helping out here, uh, yeah. making this making this show possible. And <laughs> You're I, lucky my power came on today. Yes, uh, <laughs> very lucky that your power uh, came on, because uh, if not, I'd, I'd be screwed on that front, too. <laughs> so... But uh, glad to hear you are okay. I was worried uh, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we we both have uh, weathered the the hurricane, and hopefully it doesn't come back. And it, I don't know how that's going with the. Or hopefully Nicole doesn't decide to rear her ugly head. Uh, yeah, can we just be done with the. <laughs> Of the hurricanes for a little bit. Just give us a little bit of a break. Um, but, yeah, so this uh, Monday Night Raw here, it starts off with Sasha Banks coming out to, you know, talk after she had her big title win last week. Um, you know, she talks about, you know, the, being the big dream of main eventing and Eddie Guerrero and the Lita and Trish and all that stuff. And she talks about their rematch that's set for Hell in a Cell, which they did announce at No Mercy the night before. But I like that at least they didn't acknowledge it, I guess, that when did not acknowledge Smathon in that way. Uh, that it's, Sasha does say that she wants the rematch to happen inside Hell in a Cell. Uh, but before she can really get going after that, she gets interrupted by Lana and Rusev of all people. And that Rusev starts being uh, misogynist and starts going after that no one cares about the women's revolution. And then Charlotte, who's already been out there, uh, she cuts him off and and gets gets pissed off about it and says no one should disrespect her. Uh, they're good with the challenge. And then. Uh, Charlotte, Sasha slaps the mic out of Rusev's hand so he doesn't start doing all that. And even Lana tries to get into it and try to say that the women need to know their place. And both of them attack her. Uh, I like the segment. I like the fact that they're a little bit progressive here and that we normally don't see this. Yes, it made Rusev kind of look weak, but it shows that they've changed their their view on the women that they really are set on making the women have an important role and giving them so and so much. That's a how do you feel about well, that? Women well, I mean, so? I I like the concept. I just hope that they actually use it because while yes, they're changing their view on the women to an extent, I still feel as though. 
they're going to be very timid in allowing them to do anything that we we've known to come in love we've known we've learned to love about the cell i don't think you know they may get a few bumps on the cell but you know i feel like this is going to be a very timid cell match it's basically going to be a glorified cage match for them um i'm hoping i'm wrong but in terms of that that's what i'm assuming um in terms of this whole segment um it was definitely an interesting segment but in today's wwe it was a little too predictable because as soon as you saw rusev like going after like thinking about going after charlotte and sasha then you were like okay something's gonna happen here because they're not gonna allow him to do that you knew reigns was coming out at that point well and then reigns didn't do anything that's what was stupid it's like reigns didn't need to come out at all the women had handled themselves well no but that's what i'm saying if this were you know i you know i know it's frowned upon and whatnot but like you know you could have very easily done this in a way that didn't require Reigns to come out. Even if Rusev gets, gets like, one shot in on Sasha or something. Yeah, or they can at least make it seem like Rusev is going to do something. Or Well, they did, but everyone knew that Reigns was going to come out as soon as he made it seem like he was going to go up and go after them. I mean that's that's fine and all, but I just I, I didn't don't the, see the, the point I, of Roman coming out here. Oh, neither do I. But I'm just saying it was a flat. As soon as you saw Rusev, like that was the stupid thing about this this whole thing, in my opinion, is that they had that whole double drop kick on Rusev from behind, both Charlotte and. Uh, and Sasha hitting him with a drop kick and knocking him out of the ring, which was awesome. But then, like, but then as soon as Rusev even, like, so much, even somewhat threatened any physicality on them, suddenly, oh, Rus or suddenly, oh, Roman has to come out and save the damsels in distress. Yeah. It's kind of he's the purpose of the segment, honestly. Oh, I I completely agree, but that that's the issue with WWE and the way they are forced to handle things now. Yeah, uh, agreed. Um, the segment was strong, but could have been handled in a little bit of a different way here and this does lead to them making a mixed tag match with Roman and Sasha Banks and Charlotte and Rusev which also doesn't make any sense because why would Charlotte want to tag with Rusev after what happened Um, but you know WWE logic they don't use it all the time Uh, when do they ever use it (laughs) sometimes but it's just very rare yeah. Uh, they were using they, it for a while. They, at the they've beginning. got they they use the um they use the baseball philosophy on percentages. Right. That that one out of three is a good is is a good average for them. Uh, Bailey had a squash, and then we'll get into the uh, the little tag match here that lasted about a little bit under ten minutes. I thought it was good, just just nothing like overly gonna you know go crazy about um charlotte tapped out and then roman hit rusev with the spear i mean it is what it is i mean it's what you expected it wasn't anything major and yeah and the it made actually this is so you know because they're trying anything they possibly can to get roman uh, cheers! It made the crowd kind of get quiet at times because I think they wanted to make sure they didn't cheer for Roman. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, I mean, that's the that's the thing that they're gonna have to do with Roman 
in order to get him back into the good graces of the fans is keep him in the mid card for a while. Um, I mean, obviously, every I ideally you would like to see them turn him heel at this point, but you know we're playing under the assumption that they're never going to do that. So it, if they're still hell bent on keeping him face, then you know you've got to have him go up against pure super heels like Rusev, who nobody likes. And that's the only way that you're going to get any sort of good I reaction. You still really didn't get great reactions from I mean, that you're still not getting great reactions, but, I mean, even, even the smart fans, even the male fans are saying, I don't want to root for Ro- Reigns, but at the same time, I don't want to root for Rusev either. Yep. That's that's kind of the situation they put themselves in with that match, and yeah. now you get this uh, going forward. So moving away from, I mean the the one thing, the the one thing I'll say, and we were talking about the uh, the the women's Hell in a Cell match. The one thing, and and this is, I mean the the, the down the the downward slide started before this. But I think a big, at least for me, a big spot where Reigns' popularity amongst the fans started to go south was at Hell in a Cell last year, where he didn't really have all that great of a showing inside of the cell. Um I think if he does something, you know, if he does something in the cell this year, that will automatically get him back into the good graces of the fans. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, They're going to have to do, again, turning him and doing a lot to to get that going. But, I mean, I don't think you need, like I said, if, if they were willing, and, I mean, it's not like they haven't done it recently, so, you know, they, they've they got the ability to do it if they, if they want to. And if both Reigns and Rusev are willing to do it, one giant spot on the cell, and boom, Reigns is in the good graces of the fans right then and there. All right. And we'll have to see what happens. I mean, that's but, my opinion. But I, I mean, he other, does that flying thing all the time, and I don't. I just. I, oh I get no! You. I agree I get that you. his. I agree that his move set needs to expand immensely. But I'm just saying, you know, I I know it was a, a completely different era. All of this, but you know, Foley was a mid Carter at best at that point who no one really cared about and boom can the ring 98 and he's all of a sudden thrusted into the main event well we'll have to see how dangerous they let him be you know they did let Shane do that they, one exactly that's what I'm saying it, if this were before Shane then okay I'd be like it's a long shot but they allowed Shane, who's much older than Reigns, much le- less athletic. I know, but and- the thing is, too, if Shane gets hurt, it doesn't matter. If Roman gets hurt and he's out for a while, it's going to matter a lot to Vince. That's, that's a problem. I mean, they, they, they took every precaution that they needed to there. So, I mean, I think... I mean, Shane is Vince's son. I mean, I don't think he would put him in big risk either so i mean you would you would think they they tested they had it go perfectly fine with chain and you know i think they would be willing i think if they really wanted to get reigns into the good grace of the fans that would be one surefire way to do it yeah uh gonna have to see what they do with that and so we we move it along here uh to the new day uh coming out and they uh 
discuss uh, some some things from around there, including a Danny Tanner and Uncle Jesse reference from Full House. And they uh, call Seamus hot garbage and come out with the photos again, which I thought was pretty funny. And, of course, they're going to defend their title against Cesaro and Sheamus at Hell in a Cell. Uh, Cesaro has a match with Kofi Kingston, which is actually, I thought it was as good as you're going to get here with also that storyline of Sheamus being out there on Facebook Live. And you knew he was going to get involved and cost cost, uh, Cesaro the match, so Kofi wins. Did did you uh, turn on his? Did you turn on the Facebook live feed at all? It was kind of funny to watch. I did not, but I saw that it was. Yeah, a lot of people were enjoying it. <laughs> um, what I kind of found interesting about this um, was that uh, the New Day kind of pulled a bit of a heel move in the beginning of that promo. Um, they were talking. Um, who were they talking about? They, they were talking about one of the other teams in the uh, Bay Area that oh, aren't... Oh, yeah. The Splash yeah. Brothers or... No, no, no. It Bat- wasn't... It was... Oh, they, it was the Bash Brothers. They were talking yeah. about McGuire and Canseco, which is kind of a sour subject nowadays with the steroids and everything. So, huh. you know, it was kind of... A, that was something that it was like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure a, a face group would say that. Nowadays, with with all the roid stuff, yeah, probably not. But uh, that's what kind of makes New Day cool is that yeah. they'll cross that line if they have. <laughs> well, to. they they crossed the line even more later on in the promo, which I loved. Yes, uh, that again, they they seem to be kind of getting back on the right track with the promos and. Yeah. I love the fact that like Biggie just no sold them too on that. <laughs> that <laughs> well, I mean that's thing. see, and I mean I've talked about it a lot on on the show. I mean they they pull back so much with guys like you know like Wyatt, like you know um, like Ambrose. Yet Biggie can go out and you know pretty much more or less drop an F-bomb like that and no one bats an eyelash, you know, or they did the yippee mother and then, like, self-censored, self-censored themselves. You know, they can do those things and no one bats an eyelash. So, like, you can do it and toe that line. So I don't understand why they don't do more. Well, I agree with you. Uh, it's always better when they do get to do it. So hopefully they they kind of keep that going with them. But uh, at least Cesaro and Sheamus getting more TV time with their dysfunction. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they go on with that. They've I thought they've done a good job with these two so far with this odd couple tag team. Uh mo- I moving just, it. Go ahead. I just really hope that they that they don't have them beat the new day on the first try because I mean they're so dysfunctional right now and the new that would be a really poor way in my opinion for the new day to lose their were their record breaking tag team title run. Oh yeah, you're totally right about that. That'd be really dumb. Yeah. Uh, to have I mean, them. I was fi- I would have been fine with them losing to the club. But Oh uh, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't even I I'm still annoyed that all of that work, those 7 weeks of work were pretty much all for nothing. Right. That's kind of what sucks is they've not been doing a great job with them, but at least they're trying to rehab them, so that's yeah. something, I guess. Uh, we did have the two cruiserweight uh, things on this show. Uh, the We had a tag match with uh, Sin Cara officially being part of the cruiserweight division now, which makes the stupid match that he had with Braun Strowman a few weeks ago even dumber 
because you made him look bad on his first match that we've seen him in in a while, and now he's all of a sudden in the cruiserweight division, and you're, you're making the cruiserweights look bad, even though him and Lindsay do win in about a three-minute match. Wish they would have got more time, but I still thought this was pretty good for what it was. Uh, you also get a Sami Zayn and Neville being a tag team now, taking on Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And with so, something else that, that I don't understand with that, I mean, why? I mean, both of them, I think Zayn is under 205, correct? Yeah, or he was so, at one point. I don't know if they moved him back up. I mean, it. I mean, you could certainly put him in there. Why couldn't they? I mean, it, especially if you're trying to push this cruiserweight tag team division that you're trying to create, those two would be a great combination to put into that grouping. Uh, they would be. I I just think Sami Zayn is above that at this point. Oh, I I agree with that, but, I mean, at this point, they're not really using him very well. I mean, if you're going to put him in a tag team and you're going to have him, like, face mid-card tag team, like, if you're going to have him, you know, face mashed up tag teams like Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas, then why not at least give the fans something to look forward to with those two facing other cruiserweights and putting on a great show. Uh, you are right about that. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I'm fine. I would have been fine with if Neville was in it by himself. Just, I don't want to see Sami Zayn in the cruiserweights. Uh, them being a tag team though, is something that I've said for a long time, especially when, you know they're not going to give Neville any kind of main event push. Sami Zayn obviously still has that opportunity and has had those opportunities a bit before. I, them being a tag team for the tag division that really does need tag teams at this point, I think is is really a good thing for them. Uh, hopefully they get some mileage out of that. Um, especially since you need to cool the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn feud for a little while. So that gives them something to do. Uh, the other Cruiserweight thing is based around the, the one story that you have going on right now with the Cruiserweight champion, TJ Perkins. They had a nice little bad save segment where TJ Perkins was kind of trying to get to the bottom of Brian Kendrick's problems and having him try to get back to the Brian Kendrick that he knows. And it seems like he might have got through to him, but Brian Kendrick tries to take a cheap shot. TJ Perkins knocks him down. And then you get the match between him and Arya Davari, who's the first time we've seen him, the brother of Sean Davari. Uh, Devari got quite a bit of offense more than I expected with PJ, TJ Perkins wins. The only problem I have with Perkins is he's kind of bland. Um, but still, it's a good match. Overall, cruiserweight stuff, good I mean, enough. But man, yeah, 10 I minutes mean, on the show, ugh. I mean, yeah, you'd like to give them a little bit more time. But, um, you know, I... I I honestly, I mean, yeah, he can build his character a little bit, but, I mean, the whole concept that he's doing right now with with all the video game stuff and whatnot, I, I like it. I think it it certainly um, caters to the fan base that, that likes the Cruiserweight at this point. Um, so, I mean, I... I I think it's working. It's certainly working at this point. Um, so, Div- so obviously, Davari is signing. He he lost in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, right? Yeah, he lost in the first round. So, is everyone from the Cruiserweight Classic basically signed? Everybody except Abushi and Zack Saber, I think, hmm. pretty much signed. Oh, okay. Because I'd like to see Demac at some point. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, certain guys like Demac, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, like, I thought Jason Lee was better than Ho Ho Loon, but they decided to keep Ho Ho Loon instead if they wanted a Hong Kong guy. But it is what it is. I mean, they might be brought back because there could be a weekly Cruiserweight Classic show now. If uh, that the would... rumors are going oh on really? Like. So they are. They are. Having rumors of doing that? 
that was part of that network survey. Don't know if it's actually going to happen or not, but it's in one of those, oh, okay. like, maybe it happens, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was, that it would be interesting to see that, but at the same time, it would kind of take away from the impact of having a yearly actual tournament, Cruiserweight Classic tournament. Right. Uh, it would, but they could still have the tournament, and then you have the weekly show as well. That's so. true. It is what it is. I mean, we'll have to see because I think that's probably one of the things that they are probably discussing is how would this affect the tournament? Would people want to see it if you have a weekly show already? So, yeah, that's something you got to kind of tread lightly with right now. But uh, and also, moving... what do you do with the the current division on Raw? Do you take them off of Raw and move them to the show or what? Yeah, that would be... Or do they work both? And yeah. they don't work NXT? You know, that's something as well, because they've been a good addition to NXT, so it changes a lot. They have to, they have to think about what they want to do with all of that. Did Do you like the, the stuff with uh, Kendrick and Perkins? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely like what they're doing between Kendrick and Perkins. Um, I like how they're bringing a lo- their past into it. Um so, I mean, I, I like it a lot. I think it's one of the better storylines that go, that's going right now on Raw. All right. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been enjoying it, too. They haven't gotten a lot of time, but they've been able to use the time well. So that's uh, that's a plus for now. Uh, so we talked about the Cruiserweights, we talked about all that. We talked about the women. So um, there's one more main thing that we'll get into in just a second, that's the last thing we'll talk about here. They had a lot of filler on the show. Um, because Enzo and Cass came out at one point during the, before the Sami Zayn and Neville thing. And that's where Gal, uh, Gallus and Anderson attacked Enzo and Cass. Yeah. So I guess we're getting Gallus and Anderson against Enzo and Cass now. So that's a better feud for both teams. Uh, you get more of this Titus O'Neil. BS, where we're starting that character for him, and then he loses again. So I guess the yeah. joke is on Titus O'Neil. I don't understand I mean, why the, are we starting the, a new character for him and, and he's losing. I that, that whole thing I don't understand at all. At least the Enzo and Cass and Club thing, that, you know, that whole concept, this is a, that was a good way, especially with what the club said, I think it was it was either last week or two weeks ago, saying that we're going to knock out all the fun and games out of Raw. Um, that was a good way for them to start the feud, and then we'll probably see more develop next week. Um, but yeah, this whole thing with Titus O'Neil just doesn't make any bit of sense. It is pretty much purely filler. And the whole thing with uh, Bo Dallas and uh, and Curtis Axel just didn't make much of sense either. And it, I mean, it looks like now they're gonna push Bo Dallas back after they spent the past couple of weeks trying to push him as this new character and saying, you know, he's more powerful than we thought. Yeah, um, I mean, the very wide, uh, stuff aside, I mean, it's, I, I, I don't know what the, I, I really just think this Titus O'Neil stuff is just a big joke. Oh, it's, yeah. They're not, they're not serious about it at all, it's just a big, like, oh, we'll make it seem like he's got something to do, but he's really not. Yeah. Uh, Braun Strowman squashed some dudes and said he's still not happy about what's going on. And I think that's sort of it for the filler stuff. Well, on the show. Well, um, I I did the the one thing I will say about that is I did like how they used the the uh, the two jobbers were Stephen and Clay. <laughs> they they cut some promo time on there too. I thought that yeah. was a yeah. pretty but, neat. Um, go ahead. Did did you hear the the big rumor that everyone's talking about potentially happening for next week? Well, uh, it's one thing we haven't talked about yet. I mean, is that the 
Well, it's it's, it, it's yes, it is involving Goldberg. Well, I mean, it's not a rumor. He's already said he's going to be. No, there, no, so. but the rumor is now that like he's going to be uh, Strowman's opponent next week. And that's how he'll come out. And then, like, people are saying that he's going to come out and squash Strowman, which won't, won't, wouldn't make any sense. But I wouldn't put it beyond. I mean, I Brady wouldn't put it beyond it. them. But, I mean, talk about wasting Braun Strowman just to have Goldberg oh. come out. and. Oh, I agree. Like, but... you could never take Braun Strowman seriously again if, yeah. if Goldberg oh, comes out. Oh, I completely agree. But I'm just saying that's that's the rumor that I've been seeing circulating. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. I don't, uh, I don't think that that's a bad, say, rumor. I think it makes a lot of sense. Just from a logistical standpoint, I mean, here I am talking about logic with WWE, but, uh. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we yeah. already established that, <laughs> that WWE does not follow logic very easily. So I, I mean,. I I completely agree with you that all of that if they did do that all of this work for about with Braun Strowman would just be completely obliterated from that but um but I mean it it is what it is it that could very well be Yeah, it's very possible that that it is that very could, possible. That could be what's going on here but We'll have to see. It is interesting that Goldberg is already going to be there next week, so it looks like the match being for Survivor Series is possibly the case since they're having him show up that quickly. Uh, would not be surprised. I don't have a problem with it, honestly. You do need a big hook for Survivor Series, and that kind of lets you into why they haven't been really promoting it. They've been promoting the heck out of the Royal Rumble. Um, so perhaps they think that the Royal Rumble itself will, will sell that building and they don't they don't need Goldberg and uh, Brock well I mean well that's the thing about the Royal Rumble and I mean the the Survivor Series especially nowadays I mean back back when the Survivor Series first started you had the whole five on five match um which was always a draw no matter who was in it but now they don't do that anymore really so you know you don't really get that, and I, yeah, Royal Rumble. No matter what the other matches are, you're gonna watch because of the Rumble match, because you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, very true. Uh, the Rumble match always kind of provides that you must see it, uh, even yeah. though we may wind up knowing who's gonna win by the time you get there. Uh, it's still always one thing you want to see out of that show. Uh, I thought the Paul Heyman promo was pretty good here. I still don't know how I feel about the match. I guess until I start seeing how Goldberg and Brock are going to interact. But it makes sense. Video game comes out today. Technically, they might have a midnight release. Ugh, they might have had a midnight release near you. I don't think they have one for me because uh, they are doing a PSVR release in a couple of days. But, I think uh, they might have done a midnight release here, but I don't know. Uh, the Gears of War also comes out the same day, so uh, the WWE always does this to themselves. They always come out oh, when there's another bigger game coming out the same time as them. This is always funny to me, but uh, well, because it always they they always release it like mid to late October, and that's always like the big time for games coming out. Yeah, very true. Um, but did you like the Paul Heyman stuff? Oh yeah, I I definitely like the Paul Heyman stuff. Um, he's always entertaining. You always, uh, you never you you never know what you're gonna get with Paul, and he's always something that you look forward to if he's uh if he's coming out. Um. I, I did like his little jab at uh at uh Goldberg with the whole Hey Goldberg, you're next <laughs> at the end. Yeah. Good job for him and I'm glad he kinda left that room for the fans to chant Goldberg and everything so people could know 
so that you know everybody can know that people are still into him and yeah. want to see him. That's that's a good thing. And they did set up through this show that uh, Chris Jericho and Seth Rollins would face off in a singles match to decide if Chris Jericho won, he would be added to the Hell in a Cell match. If Rollins won, that it would be a one-on-one matchup. Um, there was a part where it kind of lost its way, but it wound up being a really good match. I enjoyed the heck out of this, and a terrific main event to close out the show. Of course, Kevin Owens did get involved. He attacked Rollins and everything, as you'd expect. But uh, Seth Rollins, the one standing tall after your pedigree is Jericho. How'd you like the match and the way they kind of built to this, all this throughout the show? Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Um it, it definitely sets up for for the one on one match in the cell. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I, I I'd like to see uh, Jericho, especially since he's been in the cell before himself. At, un, unless the unless those two have a uh, falling out before this, which I don't think they will, but I think they will at some point, considering. Owens has left Jericho high and dry twice now. Um, but assuming they're still together at the time, uh, it would be interesting to see Jericho outside of the cell and being like Paul Heyman with Lesnar just screaming at Owens. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> you stupid idiot! <laughs> Uh, well, I think we've kind of covered everything from Raw. The only thing we got left to do is give it a rating. What do you think, Brandon? Uh, I gave it a 9. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, there were maybe one or two things that they could have done a little better. Um, but, I mean, all in all, I think it was good. Uh, but, so, yeah, I mean... I don't really have much else to say. Oh, well, I know they've never used it in WWE, but I think they are using it in the game. So any chance Goldberg comes out in his uh, with his old theme? It could be, but his WWE theme that he had was kind of really similar to the old theme. It was similar, but I prefer his WCW theme probably not just because i mean if they didn't let sting use that crow theme that's true that they also use in the video game oh yeah true. probably won't yeah. let him use it good point here all right uh i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna go with a six and a half i there was a lot of filler on this show yeah that's uh, true. a lot of stuff you could have skipped and you wouldn't have missed anything uh, they, I thought they did a good job building the women. They didn't do a whole lot for me as far as building. I still don't care at all about the Rusev Roman Reigns match. I thought they did a great job again, continuing to add heat to Kevin Owens, uh, going in, you know, adding fuel to the fire to the people really liking Chris Jericho and this whole thing with the list and and all that. <laughs> so I think they've taken advantage of that. Uh, the Goldberg thing was exactly what she needed to be. Paul Heyman just going out there and using his words to build up something, and now you know Goldberg's going to be there next week. The Cruiserweights could have used more time as well. They were really shafted on the show. You could have taken out some of the filler and given them more time. But, uh, you know, again, some swords are building okay, but for the most part, if you cut that hour of Raw out and dump some of this crap that you have to have in there, it would be a better overall show, but what you gonna do? It's it's kind of yeah. what you have to deal with. Or I mean, overall. you've got you've got so many guys on the roster that aren't being used right now. Right. I mean that wasn't that the whole point in the draft of the three guys to two concept, and yet it seems like both shows are using the same amount of guys. No, I think SmackDown's trying to use as much as they can, but never they have one less hour. Uh, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that Raw has 
three got like to ev- for every three Raw superstar, you have two SmackDown guys. So right. it so Raw should still be able to use every every minute to the fullest. And it seems like SmackDown is using a higher percentage of their roster than Raw is. Yeah, they are right now. Uh, but I mean, that's that's gonna happen when you book your sm- your show a lot smarter, like SmackDown, and and not book it the way they've been doing Raw lately. But yeah, yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for. WTM Raw review for this evening. Like I said, uh, expect that that's the only WTM thing you see uh, out there for you for today, uh, going on Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, we'll be doing the SmackDown Live review, uh, which you may see Brandon on for that as well. And then Paul and I will be doing the regular Rest of the Max episode of 216 part one with a ROH TV, which is still a field of honor and uh, a King of pro wrestling, new Japan's King of pro wrestling happened on Monday. It was a pretty damn good show. So you'll want to check out our, our, our thoughts on that. And of course we talk about page being suspended again and a few other things. So until then guys, uh, see you later. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.